Markarian's Chain. This classic springtime target is located in the constellation Virgo and is part of a galaxy group known as the Virgo Cluster. This cluster features a multitude of elliptical galaxies such as M84, M86, M87, and many more. There are also quite a few fainter spiral galaxies in this shot, which I won't take time to exhaustively list now, but there are a couple of noteworthy ones like M88 and NGC4388. I've had good stretches of clear nights lately thanks to a major weather pattern shift, and I was able to take advantage of one such night this past week. Still eager to play with my new imaging refractor, which I did a review on in a previous video, I wanted to try yet another wide field shot, and Markarian's chain was an ideal choice. Now, this is not my first time capturing Markarian's chain, as I did try it once before using my Canon zoom lens, and managed to get this image. But as you can plainly see, it's lacking the immense amount of data needed for those faint fuzzies. I was in a Bertle 4 zone when I gathered the data for this image, so that did help me achieve a decent signal-to-noise ratio, but without longer subs, the overall amount of signal is still quite low. This image was the result of 13 minutes of 1 minute exposures, which I know isn't a whole lot. I had the ISO set to 1600 for those shots, which was perhaps a saving grace. But anyone who does astrophotography with DSLR cameras on a regular basis can tell you that higher ISOs don't actually give you more data. Rather, they merely amplify whatever signal is already present in the data, while also increasing noise in the images. I think this was one of those projects that I had initially started and intended to continue at a later time, but that never materialized as 2022 just rolled on by. Fast forward to one year later, and now armed with my imaging refractor, I decided to try this wide field target again. Initially, I wanted to shoot for super long exposures using lower ISO, like in a neighborhood of 3 to 5 minutes. But when I was all set up and ready to go, I ran into one little but very problematic snag. Sadly, my auto guiding system and software was unable to detect a guide star to lock onto. So I was forced to rely solely on my mount's tracking precision. Consequently, I was limited to two minute exposures and to be honest, even that was pushed my mount's limit that night as I don't currently have periodic error correction program in my mount. This image here is one such two minute exposure at ISO 800, which I would say has a wealth of good data from the looks of it and 22 frames later, I came up with this stacked and edited result of 44 minutes of total integration. With these shots having been taken from my Brutal 6 patio, there was a bit more light pollution this time around, which didn't help matters at all from the post-processing side of things. I would say this project is far from over though, as 44 minutes is pretty minimal still for a target such as this. I feel like this is one of those situations where I acquired a decent amount of data, but don't have the advanced skills, tools, or both to truly bring out the details. You may have noticed that there is virtually no color whatsoever in this image, and the reason for that was because much of the color that was present in my data was from unwanted noise, so when I edited it out in post-processing, I had to sacrifice whatever color may have been present in the signal. Perhaps I can return to this target later this spring under darker skies and acquire enough new data to bring out more color. Anyway, for me what it is, I consider this to be a decent start to a fun and exciting new project, and I look forward to sharing more updates about it in the future. Anyway, that is all for today's video. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more of this kind of content. Until next time, clear skies and cheers!